That's why I asked you. I wanted to get the okay. Fuel control unit. What's wrong with this picture? It's upside down. It's upside down. Now we can't read anything. Now we can't read. They can't read it. You want it upside down or right side up? Yes, both. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You said time is an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Attach the unit, connect linkage, one side, connect the throttle, the other side to mixture. Well, let's get this going here. Which side is which? Since it's upside down now. Um, right side is throttle. Fuel comes. So. Yep. Throttle. Left side is mixture. Other side is mixture. Throttle mix. Does it say that? It says two manifold valves. Oh, there's a mixture shaft and throttle over there. Okay, so throttle mixture. All right, so what do we got here? Fuel comes in through screen, screen into this little chamber right here. And there are metering orifices here that will allow more or less fuel to flow through over to the throttle. But if you take away fuel going to the throttle, you must have it go somewhere else, so it's gotta come down and around and go back to the pump. The so we have to do something with 100% of this fuel coming in. So whatever percent doesn't go over to the throttle has gotta go back to the inlet side of the pump. All right, from there, it's gonna go through this metering plug, right there, fuel metering plug. And this is a, simple, a little more simplistic here. And then it goes through these metering orifices, whereby the more the, the more the throttle is opened, the more the big holes are going to be lined up, more fuel is going to go through. Pull it back to idle, you got smaller holes. I might regret this decision, but let's do this. I'm not sure who Mark Whitcamp is, but he did this in 2003, and it's reasonably well done. I was looking for the disc because these pictures aren't the best. I think it's because it's been copy of a copy of a copy. You have one job, man. So you have access to this through Canvas. And what you'll do is you'll open this up and you're going to go through this and that's how you will be able to go through this um, in the lab. So well, we can go through it now, which I've never done before in lecture. Exploded to you. So what do we have? Mixture? Throttle? Throttle. Wait, screen. No, other way, flip it. Oh, no, Mix. Upside down. Yeah. Yep. Now it's right side up. Yeah. Yep, mixture's on the right. Hmm? Yeah. Mixture's on the right, throttle's on the left. Dual valve is on the left. The screen's on the bottom. Screen's on the bottom. Screen. Can I write? No, I can't. Let me see. There we go. Fuel. Nah. It's highlighted. You, you can type. Oh, I don't like it. Nope. Oh, done. No. done with you. Okay. Oh, it's signature. I don't want to sign. Jeez, what the heck? Close open. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, exploded view. Fuel valve on the left. Mixture valves on the right. Fuel strainer screen in the bottom. We saw that. Not pictured because it's still inside the body is the brass plug, which is the center of the whole thing. That is going to be in the next picture. Brass plug is sealed with O rings held in place between the fuel valve and mixture by screw. It also goes to the. All right, so what it's saying is there's a brass plug, the screw right there, it holds it in. Notice right here, there's a lot of springs right there, okay? It, yeah, it's a really a tight fit in there. You're going to have a hard time kind of getting that going. Where's the hand? So that's what you're saying about the grit. That... Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, there's the plug in the middle. Ooh. It's got a lot of little holes in it. Yeah, so All right. The, <laughs> you have the threaded hole. Okay, that one's easy. Next to the hole, it's just pass away. X says fuel return to the tank. Number two. There. So we have the mounting hole. We've got excess fuel. I haven't verified this. Back to the tank. Remember, that was going out the bottom mm -hmm. of the fuel control unit. Okay, so that's going to head back to the bottom. That is going to be connected. Um, over to here. That goes back to the inlet side of the pump. Okay. Excess fuel, excess fuel return line, number three. So, oh, excess, uh, I don't know if I buy that. Um, that's why I said I'm going to regret doing this and pulling this up because um, I didn't check the notes on here very well. Uh, there you go. Main metering jet. I'll buy that. 
And like I said, there's also this hidden little thing. There's a little check valve. Green jet. Wait, that's a little the check, check valve. valve. Yeah, a little check valve. I have not verified the accuracy of this. Uh, once you get it out and you have it in your hand, you're going to kind of look and you're going to see like you have a hole going through, but it doesn't go through. It's like you can't shine light through it because there's a little, I mean, it is tiny little check valve. It is really small. And so we have all of those holes in there. So you can have the main metering jet goes all the way through. You have a check valve. It's going to come back the other way. It doesn't go all the way through. It does go all the way through. You well, just can't shine a light through it because there's a ball check, a check ball in there. Then you can have the return going back back through. And so all of those have to be in that little plug. Um, yeah, I'm going to let you kind of play with this. It, I think it's going to be so much more meaningful when you can actually take it apart, put it in front of you, and go through this rather than me go through it. But I want to just give you a heads up on the, on the little things that we're looking for. See how that's a little eccentric? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's lining up and allowing the main metering jets to be opened or closed. And I believe that's the little return hole path right there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. But anyway, make sure you go through this and read every, if you have any questions, just let me know. Or watch the video I did last year, because I think I go all through it, all the way through it, piece by piece by piece with my little camera. You guys notice that? I didn't see that. All right, so a few years ago, Last time I did the class, was that nine, two years ago? All right, yeah, because of COVID, I did it at home on Zoom. And so I had all of this stuff on my desk. And then I used, if you haven't watched, I used a well, camera like that. And then I would switch over to a borescope camera. And I would zoom in on stuff and go inside passages and stuff. So it was, it was kind of fun. Yeah. How are the arms held in there with their rotating? When you slide them in, the springs want to push it out, but there's a pin that goes in the top, and then there's a, a cup like that, so the pin goes in and holds it. Okay. So you press it in, put the pin in, and then it just stuck there. Fuel control unit, one, two, three, four. Center contains a fixed metering plug, uh, one chamber. Chamber. That was tough. One, what was it? One chamber connects to fuel return. Fuel return. Uh, one chamber connects to mixture control valve. It's on the SCU that there's some like, plugs on it. Is that just for inspection? Like inspection yeah, plugs? some of our, some of our holes have. Plugs. Oh, yeah, uh, not inspections. No, you can um, plumb in if you needed to, pressure gauges and stuff there, which uh, it's not worth pointing out. But one chamber connects to mixture control, to mixture control. All right, here we go. So fuel enters inlet. And passes through through what? Screen. There you go. Through filter or screen. I think I like screen is better, but it's really more of a screen. Yeah. Uh, through filter to mixture control to mixture control. So in lean, in the lean position, more fuel is directed towards the return. More fuel is directed to return port, which goes back to where? Yep. And less to metering. Less to metering valve or metering orifice. So two in the rich position. Less fuel is directed. 
back to pump. And more to metering valve. Orifice. Call Orpheus. So the metering valve is linked to the throttle. Metering valve has a cam. I don't know. Geez, I always hate writing all this. Now ah, we're almost done. Metering valve um, has a cam shaped opening. Cam shaped opening, which means it gets progressively larger. which is what I was explaining, how that main metering orifice, and then you have the cam that rolls over it, makes it larger, smaller. And that's what does our metering. As throttle is opened, metering valve allows more fuel to be sent to Sent to the what? As the throttle is open, the metering valve allows more fuel to be sent to. We're in the FCU. Flow divider. Flow divider. But it's not called a flow divider in continental world. Valve. Manifold valve. Yeah, I guess what happens if you call it a dis. Guess what happens if you call by the wrong name during your oral? You nah, I'm not gonna say it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta lead by example. If I can't pull it right, you don't have to pull it right. <laughs> All right, I'm out of room. Gotta move over. And obviously, I'm not going to write this as throttles closed, less fuel sent off to the manifold valve. Let's talk about the manifold valve. Has two functions. How many did the Bendix have? Three. Okay. Two functions. This one has two. They are one, two. What are they? You knew the Bendix, you should know these. Allows fuel. Allows fuel. Allows fuel to flow. Three cylinder. So you cylinder. All right. Distributes fuel. Distributes fuel. Distributes. Distributes fuel evenly. Distributes fuel evenly to all cylinders. Best it can. And Cuts off fuel. Positive. Provides positive shutoff. It uses a spring-loaded diaphragm. How's that pronounced again, guys? Diaphragm. Diaphragm. <laughs> I've heard it both. I've heard it both ways. Which show is that? Did you guys know that one? Do you ever watch Psych? Oh, yeah. This is a great show, though. It was, it was but he'd always say that. Well, I've heard it both ways. <laughs> so every time I say that, that's what I'm referring to. When I say it. No you guys never cut it. it. No one ever gets it. Uses a spring loaded, spring loaded diaphragm. Um, that lifts valve off its seat. That lifts valve off its seat. Well, if that was the Bendix system, fuel starts flowing, right? Jesus Christ. Right. 
There is a little poppet valve. So there's a little poppet valve that keeps fuel from flowing. That keeps fuel from flowing. Keeps fuel from flowing until proper pressure. This keeps the distributor valve from regulating fuel. So Continental does not regulate fuel. Which one does? Bendix RSA does. Continental system does not. Now, when you take this apart, and you will get a chance to take it apart, you're not going to see the poppet valve. It's really hard to see. So use a light and look inside there, inside of the part that goes up and down, and all you'll see is a few spirals, some threads or something. That's the spring in there. So you can see the spring, but it's really hard to see the poppet valve. So you just got to look for it. Trust me. Or don't. I don't know. So vent on top. Vent on top of distributor valve must be kept away from ram air. Must be kept away from ram air. Uh, just What's ram air? Anything that hits it directly on? Coming in hard. So if we take the, that's why I said it. I said distributor. Now I can't say it right. Distributor valve, and it has that little vent so that the diaphragm can go up and down. If I face that into the prop blast and the pressure cowling air coming in, then it's going to pressurize that, and it's going to want to push down on it. What happens if the diaphragm goes down? More fuel. More fuel. Less well, fuel. Here, why am I going to have a bad time? It's going to close it. When the diaphragm closes, what happens to the fuel going to the cylinders? It doesn't. It doesn't. Could you imagine the, the problem that one would create if you put it on? Yeah. You know, the, the, the pilot comes back and says, well, I mean, it, it worked fine. Everything was on the ground all the time. Then I took off, and as I built up speed, I started to lose fuel flow. And then I backed off, and it started to come up, and then I'd speed up, and it'd go down. It's like... Well, I know. I put the thing on facing forward. That's what you say. Ah, I was going to put it on the port of test. We got to put it up on the rack, raise it up, get underneath, see what's going on. You got to spend as much money as possible. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, nozzles. Nozzles. Oh, you like this one. Basically, the same as Bendix. <laughs> No, but they look, I mean, they, boy, if you took the one piece from Bendix and the one piece from Continental and brought it back out, you're like, oh, man, I don't know. They're, it would be tough to tell which is which. Uh, let me see, what do we got here? They even go so far as to have a letter stamped on them. On the flat. Letter stamped on the flat. Uh, there's an A. A B and a C. So A is the baseline. That's your basic one. Uh, B is one half, oops, one half gallon uh, per hour more flow. And the C is one gallon per hour more flow. Uh, all right. I had a whole bunch of stuff here. I said cut out because you don't need to know this. Talked about setting up the fuel flows and stuff. 
would love to get a fuel flow system and let you guys actually set it up. That'd be kind of fun. Um, so what else do I have here? Nozzles are modified to incorporate a shroud with upper deck pressure, same as Bendix. Um, some Continental does use an altitude compensating fuel valve in the fuel pump. So, like so the same theory. Okay. And let me tell you why, or you can tell me why. Did we get everything? Got all that. Yep, we covered that. Same thing, covered that, covered that, covered that, covered that. Broken. Broken, all right. There. All right, do my best here. So, Continental does, in this little area right here, put in a, um, yeah, we'll do it this way. Put in a valve to an aneroid. A bellows. Bellows. Potato chip bag. Potato chip. And the reason why you would do this is what? Uh, At altitude, it's going to restrict your fuel flow. So if I go up in altitude, this will expand. Yeah. All right, and it's going to press down here and make this smaller. Yep. Yep. Restricting the fuel. Restricting the fuel. Which sends more to the engine. And it gets more richer. richer. Wait. Wait. <laughs> I'm just going all with you guys here. You guys are just going right it's along here. <laughs> okay. It's, that doesn't work, does it? No. no. No, you guys walked right into it. You have to open it up. Huh? You have to open up the orbit. It would have to be an inverted needle for that to work, right? Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. Except it doesn't work that way. Okay. The bellows is around it. So uh, it's we're going to back there. Bellows in a bellows. What? No. For upper deck, upper deck pressure. Now let's talk about this. It's not sensing outside altitude, outside air. It's getting loose pressure. So I've got a turbocharger, and you know there's a little bit of lag with the turbocharger, so I slam the throttle open, throttle opens up, fuel pump instantly starts going, starts sending some fuel off to the, to the engine. But I don't want to over-richen it. But in a second, I'm going to have my turbo is going to come on, and it's really going to start packing some air in there. I want more or less fuel. Less or more fuel. I want more fuel. So as the turbo comes on, and this is upper deck pressure, which is the turbo outlet, and this fills up, what is this going to do? It's going to press down and lift up the needle. So that doesn't work yet either, does it? So do we want a needle like this? No. We want an inverted. Oops. So an inverted needle, which would be more like that. And it pulls it up. Yeah. Like a Did I do it right? I said it right. I just didn't so, like I drew it wrong. <laughs> I just didn't draw it right. <laughs> Hang on. So we want it to compress, and when it compresses, we want to. No. We need to. Yes, it's got to restrict it. Yes. So it's an inverted needle. Okay. So an inverted needle. So. Yeah, something like that, but just not drawn well. <laughs> so an inverted needle. So as it compresses and it draws that needle up, it's going to it's gonna restrict, restrict it. Give more fuel to and then more fuel is going to go to the engine. Follow? Yep. So in this case, it's used more on turbocharged engines. We could turn it around and do the same thing with a non-turbocharged engine, just like we did on the Bendix. And instead of going to upper deck, we say it's atmosphere. not a turbocharged. Now it's to atmosphere. And now what happens? So now, it's now we'd have to change it around, right? So as we go up in altitude, we want it to lean out. So we go up in altitude, it expands 
as it expands, this is going to drop down, mm -hmm. opening this up. Which is going to let more fuel flow within the system. Within the system, which leaned it out, which is what we wanted because it went up in altitude. Yep. Yeah. Okay, got it? Yeah. Yeah. So, same system, work both ways. Huh? I've heard it both ways. <laughs> Altitude compensating fuel valve is incorporated in the fuel pump. Aneroid bellows moves the tapered orifice, which varies the amount of fuel bypassed. There we go. Um, let's see. There's a video on how to do the fuel flow setup. And I could not stand it because let's just say it was an, a 30 minute video, 15 minutes of it was warnings, the same warning repeatedly. So they would say, oh, now we're gonna move on to step two. And then they would do like the whole warning for like five minutes. Like I can't do this So, And it's on VHS, so what are you gonna do? Oh God. What, what is what's a VHS? <laughs> <laughs> Very high. That's, that's, that's it. From, we want rewinding too much. All right. Well, it looks like we made it through the end of the notes. So on your test, I'm going to divide it up. I should just let you figure it out. But it says in bold letters, the following questions apply to the Bendix RSA fuel injection system. And then later on, it says. Yeah. Read the directions carefully. If you don't, you're going to miss a lot of questions. <laughs> Just leave it, leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, you guys ever heard of that, the questions, the, the follow directions test? Yes. Yeah. I did. <laughs> How'd you do? Terrible. <laughs> I failed every one. I got a zero percent. Did you stand up and bark or whatever? Yeah. Yep. <laughs>